let's talk about more unconventional raft building hacks. Hi friends, and welcome back to Raft. Today, as you may have guessed by now, I have a ton of strange building advice all neatly compiled for you. A while ago, I posted the first round of unconventional build hacks, and you guys seem to enjoy that, so we're going to get even more unconventional today. These are mostly based in glitches or slight oversights in the way the game is coded, but you can definitely use these to make some really cool rafts. So from flying carpets to a glitch that I discovered myself, let's dive into part two of unconventional raft building hacks. So I'm pretty much contractually obligated to talk about this whenever we mention building and glitches in raft. So in case you weren't aware, there is indeed a way to make your floors float. And the way you pull this off is pretty darn simple. So typically, when you're building floors in Raft, you can only build in the immediate vicinity of a pillar, like so. And if you break it, your floors go poof. And that's not necessarily the best thing if you're trying to build a really big Raft, or if you don't love having pillars every two squares. So what you can do is you can instead take your normal pillar and take a triangle half floor. I personally think it looks best with the fancier wood, so you can just do that. And once we destroy this pillar over here, our floors float, and that's pretty great. You'll also notice that this gives us one plank and one nail, which is the exact same as a half pillar, despite the full pillar costing double that amount. So the only real piece of advice I can give you in this front is to make sure you're using half pillars, just to save on your wood and nails as you are building massive rafts. This next thing is something that I think I discovered this week, and I don't think anyone else has ever seen it before. But of course, if you knew about it, let me know, because I don't want to take credit for something that I didn't invent. Anyways, I have opted to call it floor trees, which I think is pretty apt, considering you put trees in floors. And it actually uses our friends, the floating triangles, from earlier to achieve this. Basically, you can see that this is perfectly off-center from the triangles, and for whatever reason, it doesn't view this as clipping. So we can actually destroy this and fully rebuild it if I had wood in my inventory. So if we go ahead and grab another plank from down here real fast, we can actually just place this back. And that doesn't count as colliding in any way, shape, or form. And this is actually a fully functional tree farm. So we can, of course, take down our tree that we've already got up here. And we can jump down and put in a new seed. And it's fully functional. I was actually working on a decoration tips video that you'll see sometime in the future when I found this, and I didn't mean to, but it was still pretty cool. If you're wondering how it's set up, here's a version without the walls to make it a little more clear. Basically, it is a raised platform with some stone tables on top, specifically these ones are the right height. You can do it with just one, but it's harder to place, and then of course your large crop plot on top of that. I was working on a design that makes the crop plots look a little more flush with the floor, and accidentally discovered that you can put the floating floors on them too, so that's also just cool, and I don't think anyone knew about it. This next thing isn't so much of a glitch as it is just a demonstration of pure dedication. So it turns out that you can actually take tables and stuff them all into a confined location to make some pretty intricate floors. Specifically, I find that the tall, thin tables like these work the best because they're just ever so slightly shorter than the half walls, and they make for a really interesting pattern. If you're wondering why I have a rug in the middle, it's because this exact platform isn't perfectly sized to fit in a full number of tables, so I just kind of hit a little hole right there, but of course there are sizes that work perfectly with this. And this is actually fully functional as a floor. Anything that doesn't need to be locked into the traditional building grid in Raft can be placed on top of this. So bathtubs, smelters, floor storages, beds, of course, trash cans, storage, all of that could be placed here. Personally, I think this would make for a really cool bedroom, as you can actually put like a bed on this, like we said, and then make a really cool intricate sunken floor area just for your bed in the middle and then have regular floors surrounding it on all sides. If you come up with a really cool design with this, please send it to me, because I really want to see what people can come up with using this. But be warned, it does take a fair amount of time to line up all of your tables. If you saw my more recent Raft Glitches video, then you are no doubt aware that if you put a raised platform on a pillar, then you can actually offset it from the normal building grid that we talked about over there. And it offsets by a half meter in either direction, so you can see that there's a little gap here and a little gap here. And this is completely offset, it fully works, you can build walls on this and everything. 
But what if I told you you could shift it in just one direction? Well, using the expensive fence, that's fully possible. So you can actually see it's flush on this side and still has the gap over here. So you can shift things in just one direction and not have as many holes to deal with in your floor. And I've set up a little demo area over here where you can see what this would kind of look like. So, of course, normally you would only be able to put a window either right here or right here. And you would not be able to put one right here. But of course, using this glitch, there you go. Pretty cool. Also, if we bring back our friends, the triangle floors, we can actually patch up some of this to just have minimal holes. So it's just like a little quarter of a thingy. And of course, there is a little clipping texture over here. So you can just cover this up with carpets and no one will know, because carpets are your friend. Of course, we can also take this in full combination with the floating things from over there, and just make all of this float. So if we destroy any part of this, like so, then we have our floating floors, which are again flush in this direction, but have this gap, because pillars are traditionally flush with walls. So, that in itself is pretty darn useful, and can definitely be used to make some really cool decorations. This next thing is actually something that I learned from the Raft Discord recently, and if you're not already a part of that, you should join. There's a lot of really interesting discussions happening there. But this is something that is referred to, at least as I have seen it, as the carpet or rug glitch, which is pretty simple to pull off realistically. So we've got two walls facing each other, like so, and we've got two shelves on top of said walls. And then when we put down a rug on top of one of the shelves and destroy the walls, we can destroy this one too, that goes away, but the rug is left floating. This actually works with any item that you can put on top of a shelf normally, including storages, so you can rotate this in all directions. Which is a little bit of a spoiler, because one of the biggest assets of shelves is that you can rotate them along a wall. And carpets of course clip through walls so they don't matter, and this is now fully rotated, and it still floats. So you can actually use this to make some pretty interesting shapes. Like I've made a little rainbow bridge over here, which is pretty darn cool actually. And this is a fully curved shape, because curved shapes don't exist in Raft for whatever reason. So you can make your own doing this. You could even make a full dome if you wanted to. I was too lazy to do so, but if you choose to do it, good luck. I wish you well. And as we've been looking around, you probably noticed this in the background of my raft, and you're probably wondering what the heck I did to my game to make this happen. This is actually completely vanilla, although I would recommend the longer signs mod in combination with this because it just makes it a little bit easier. Basically what we can do is if we go ahead and click on this sign, you can see that there's actually a little bit of internal coding to signs, which is pretty cool. So here I have modified the size to be 15, which makes it huge. 1 is the normal size, so anything larger than 1 is a multiplier, and anything less than 1 is a divider, basically. So this is obviously the H for the hello. We got it all spread out, and it looks pretty darn cool in my opinion. Now, there's a lot more that you can do with signs that's not just modifying the size. Like I said, you can make your text really, really tiny, like so. It's pretty cute. But you can also change the position of it using the position, and if you set the position to negative, it goes left. And there's also 15 built-in emojis to raft. So if we go up here and we change this over to 1 instead of 15, you can see that all of this will change constantly, which is pretty darn cool. And, of course, adding a B makes it bold, I makes it italic, and then this is the part that longer signs is really handy for, is colors. Because you can assign a color to something, or to something insane like this, but each of these requires its own color signifier. And you can even apply this to trophies. You can see all of those have their own little color codes. Lappy is of course red, because it's a freshwater fish and doesn't belong in the ocean. That's another side tangent. And you can even do this. This is part of Vanilla Raft. You don't need the longer sides mod to achieve this at all. You can just make a huge laughing face. All you need to do is put in the size modifier, and then the sprite you want. And that, that's it. It looks like that. This isn't the base game. You can do this. And now that it's nice and dark, let's go ahead and take a nice little nap in our bed over here. When we wake up, you'll notice I'm on top of the world, which is pretty darn cool. Basically, the way that this works is if we hop down here, you can see that I've got a little stack of beds going up. Wrath is pretty interesting in the way that it works that when you get up out of a bed, it will always try and put you on top of the bed rather than next to your bed. So, if there isn't a space for you to stand up in, say less than a half of a wall tall, then it'll just teleport you up to the lowest space that you can stand on. And you can just make this go as high as you want. 
Personally, I think this is a great use of all of the leaves and plastic that you've built up by the mid-game, and it's pretty cool, because you can just instantly teleport upright. And of course, you can take this all the way up as high as you want it, within reason, of course, don't lag out your computer trying to do that, but still really cool. And now that we're up here, we've got one more thing to show off. So if you use the zipline tool, which of course this requires you having Pete and Caravan Town and having access to all of this, that you can actually just place it directly upwards using a series of platforms. Again, this uses our friends the flying floors from way down there. But if you ride the zipline and immediately get off, you can just teleport directly upwards, which is pretty darn cool. You can actually fully form floors like this too, if you offset them ever so slightly. So if I had a pillar that I could support this off of, I could actually place another floor right here, which is also very useful. Of course, you do have to build your rope way taller than you actually want to teleport, but it's still really cool to get up immediately, kind of like the beds, but a little less expensive. And if you want to get down instead of jumping, you can actually just ride the zipline all the way back down, and it'll take you back to the base without taking fall damage. If you want to get off of this without taking fall damage, like, that's up to you. And that was our last tip for this round of unconventional building hacks. Hopefully you all enjoy the weirdness in this game as much as I do, and I cannot wait to keep learning more weird stuff for us all to enjoy together. Let me know which one of these tips was your favorite, and also which one surprised you the most. Personally, I love the bed teleporting method because I really hate building tall ladders and going up them, but of course my own glitch is a close second. But that's it for me for now. Please consider leaving a like if you enjoyed, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. It really helps me out. I hope to see you all again soon. But until then, have a great day.